Good Friday. Greetings, everyone. Welcome into the First Call Podcast. Alongside Jeff Siegel, I'm Jeremy Plunk, representing Express Bet and First Bet. This is the podcast where the point in the week comes where we've got to get our handicapping ducks in a line, Mr. Siegel. We're going to look at eight races today uh, towards Saturday racing. Kind of a strange weekend on the calendar in thoroughbred racing. No graded stakes on a Saturday at all across North America. One on Sunday at Santa Anita. So this holiday weekend that extends into Monday, Martin Luther King Day. Of course, there will be holiday racing at Santa Anita in Southern California mm-hmm. on Monday. A little bit bare in the cupboard in terms of big stakes races. Yeah, I mean, uh, you're you're always looking forward to uh, a weekend stakes uh, for three-year-olds, but nothing significant. Mm-hmm. Um, although I will say that your countdown to the crown is up today. So if you right. are interested, uh, check it out. Uh, an incredible amount of information uh, that Jeremy puts out on that website. So um uh, and by the way, you'll never know when the next uh, uh, contender shows up. There are a lot of maiden yeah. races this week that uh, have some very well-bred, uh, promising young horses. So uh, check that yeah. out as well. But from a gambling standpoint, we'll try to make the best of it. There, there aren't any major stakes races, but there are some good ones uh, and solid ones and maybe a few worth gambling on. So we'll uh, look at eight uh, on Saturday. And again, as Jeremy mentioned, there is racing continuing on here, at least in California, uh, Sunday and Monday as well. Big weekend for the Coast to Coast Pick 5. They had to carry over last week, so like almost 900000 was bet into it on Sunday. We'll see if anybody hits it this Saturday. The Coast to Coast Pick 5, of course, matches five races from Gulfstream and Santa Anita. Here's the lineup for the first Coast to Coast Pick 5 for this Saturday on January 13th. We'll start with two races in sequence at uh, Gulfstream, races 10 and 11 on the card, and then races 5, 6, and 7 in order. So, little less than two hours start to finish for the Coast to Coast Pick 5. Again, a carryover last Saturday. Nobody hit it. We will see if it's a little more formful this week and if anybody can take down that wager. If you like to play handicapping tournaments, we're the place for you each and every weekend and weekdays as well as we've got feeder tournaments on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday this coming weekend for Santa Anita and Gulfstream events. And then on Saturday, it's week two of the 19th annual Beat the Host Handicapping Contest. Millie Ball is in the saddle. She's literally in the saddle on social media uh, promoting the uh, races this weekend. Millie will have the Beat the Host task of trying to take down public handicappers or uh, you guys, she's the public handicapper trying to take you down in the Beat the Host contest. She follows Pete Aiello. I've been in that leadoff spot before in Express Bet Beat the Host over the years, Jeff. And there was a year when I had the duck and went 0 for 10 and let just about everybody through. We brought in Pete, a new guy, last week, and unfortunately, he played Olay defense and <laughs> no win for Pete last week. So Millie's got to keep some people out. I think there were like 460 some players who qualified for the Beat the Host final right off the bat uh, in week one. But keep playing, even if you won Beat the Host last week and you beat Pete Aiello and you qualified for the championship round. Remember, there's weekly prizes, $2,000 in weekly prizes. There's season prizes and a leaderboard. And there's a sweep the host bonus that we saw Tom Bassett win last year, $6,000 if you beat the host all eight weeks. So if you beat Pete last week, you got to take on Millie again this week. And again, there's no charge to play beat the host. It's just five ten dollar or ten five dollar win bet. So fifty dollars in paramutual money, any winnings that you have in paramutual ranks will just roll into your account. So you're playing the races. Last five races at Gulfstream, first five races at Santa Anita on Saturday will be the beat the host. Jeff will be up later in the season for beat the host, as will I. Eddie Olchek, plenty of others. You've got eight hosts to take down. One so far, Pete Aiello. And now Millie Ball takes you on on Saturday. Here are our races that we will handicap on this podcast. For those of you watching on Twitter and on uh, YouTube, be sure to hit that like button. Share this out with people across YouTube to help build our audience. For those of you on our traditional audio channels in the audio podcast, here's a listen at the schedule that Jeff and I will handicap. At Aqueduct, we'll take on the Busanda Stakes, race number six on the card there for three-year-old fillies. To Oaklawn, we will stay with the three-year-old fillies and the Mockingbird Stakes sprinting there. At Oaklawn, a trio of stakes races as we start the road to the Tampa Bay Derby. It's the Wayward Last, the Gasparillo, and the Pasco for the three-year-olds, just going seven-eighths of a mile there, but maybe some Tampa Bay Derby aspirations down the line. 
at Turfway, one of the better betting races, and we say this at Turfway a lot of days on the racing calendar, one of the better betting races of the day will come up in the likely exchange stakes, a good deep field there at Turfway for Saturday night's feature. And at Santa Anita, the old Sunshine Millions, Cal Cup kind of combo day, five state bred stakes races. We will handicap two of those on the podcast, the Sunshine Millions, Philly and Mare Turf, and the Unusual Heat Turf Classic, which also doubles as our express bet race of the week. Tournament players, we already mentioned, beat the host on Saturday. There's also a $500 Santa Anita tournament on Saturday, the Cal Cup Challenge. And if you want to play feeder tournaments towards the Pegasus World Cup, we've got an $80 feeder Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at Gulf Street Park. And then Santa Anita will have feeder tournaments on Friday and Sunday towards some big money tests uh, coming up later in the meet as well. So plenty of action, Jeff Siegel, as we get started on our handicapping. We're going to go to Aqueduct on Saturday for the Bustanda. A mile and an eighth, that's one lap around the Big A, uh, $100,000. Three-year-old fillies may be making their way towards the Comely Stakes, which is the New York prep towards the uh, Kentucky Oaks this year. We're already going to a mile and an eighth early in the season, so you could have an Oaks filly come out of the Bustanda. Yeah, I mean, Shimmering Allura, who is the four to five morning light favorite, has run a mile and eighth at Aqueduct. Did so last time out back in uh, early December when she was a, an admirable second uh, in the Demoiselle behind Live Talk. Uh, that was a good, solid effort there. And what I want to, I always point this out when I see it because it's somewhat unusual. Um, this is a, a filly that has had seven starts now in her career. And in every race that she has run in, her Byron number has risen. There's no backward moves. There's no lateral moves. She just keeps getting faster and faster and faster. And she's uh, earned a 79 buyer number in her most recent start, which probably will be good enough to beat this field, hence the odds-on morning line uh, listing that she is. She's got an, a, a, a mid-pack style. She doesn't have a lot of tactical speed. But going to mile and eighth, basically all you have to do is get the trip, I think, more than anything else. Uh, they all sort themselves out by the time they hit the top of the stretch. Um, right. She's had uh, you know, about six weeks off now, um, uh, training steadily here for Kenny McPeak. No reason to believe that uh, she won't run her race, and her race is probably going to be good enough. Not a great gamble by any means, but uh, I would be surprised um, if she uh, if she doesn't win. Note about Jin Jin in this race. Brad Cox has this one in New York for the first time, the three races in Kentucky. Normally you think Brad Cox has won in the Busanda, would be a major player. I'm not so sure. This horse was second in the Rags the Riches, beaten six lengths by West Sunset, who's come back and really hasn't followed up that effort, and then ran poorly in the Goldenrod last time. I'm not so sure how good those Kentucky Phillies were uh, in the two-year-old Philly ranks. Of course, we saw the New Yorkers be very strong through the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies with just FYI and company. So I kind of think the New York horses were stronger in the two-year-old Philly ranks last year, uh, and that will probably continue as we hit here uh, into the spring. So shimmering allure with those two starts, local in the Tempted and the Demoiselle probably has the class edge on Jin Jin coming north for the first time uh, from Kentucky. Let's go to our second handicapping task of the weekend. It will be at Oaklawn. It's the Mockingbird Stakes, $150,000 the first here. These are three-year-old fillies. Could be on the Fantasy Trail. Of course, the Fantasy is the Oaklawn prep towards the uh, towards the Kentucky Oaks. And in the uh, uh, six furlong Mockingbird Stakes, we've got a field of six in here, Jeff. Rare that we see at Oaklawn a shorter field in the stakes race like this, but uh, we don't have a big field. There's also not just a complete like lead pipe cinch that's keeping this field down. Sometimes you'll see a short field in the stakes race because nobody wants to run against a particular horse. This race just didn't come up all that deep, and there's really not a standout in here. Of the last out winners, they were all kind of narrow maiden winners, not big margins. The other horses coming off a defeat, so half of them coming off maiden wins, half of them coming off defeats last time. How did you see the mock? Bird uh, rounding out here. Well, you, you pointed out no standout. You've got six starters here, mm -hmm. and the longest price horses are five to one. You got two of them. Mm -hmm. So, what they say, the old uh, newspaper comment, top to bottom, a chance. You know? <laughs> and uh, I looked at this race, uh, and one thing that also stood out is it's a it's six uh, it's a bunch of late running sprinters without, mm -hmm. without a lot of speed in the race. I mean, even right. the ones that look like will be close up to the lead aren't going to be going fast. Now, you can look at this mm -hmm. two ways. All right, there's no speed in the race, so who among the pace types are going to have a, an advantage? On the other hand, in a small field, the closers are not going to have anybody in their way. They can right. build up the momentum at the 3 8 bowl and, and have an extended run and not worry about traffic. So mm -hmm. this is we'll, – we'll have another race later on I'll talk about in which 
the pace projected pace scenario was really going to impact the race and make make it volatile, which is to say that nothing would even surprise me. I ended up with Tanya Showers. Um, mm -hmm. She's had four starts. The thing that I'm a little bit worried about her is she's coming back really quick. Uh, ran right. on New Year's Eve and won really nicely, and she's been building um, a resume here with just four starts, and her numbers are, are good. I mean, and she's outside. Yeah. She shouldn't have any dirt in her face, and she should be able to move when she wants to move. So if the short right. rest doesn't do her in, I mean, I visually I thought she was pretty nice in, in her in her maiden win uh, at Oakland here a couple of weeks back. And if she runs back to that race, I, I give her a slight edge, and she's five to two, which is a, right. a square price in a small field. Tanya Showers, good pedigree for a sprinter by Run Happy out of Miss Mary Pat, who was a good sprinter. Chris Hartman trains this one. Let's go back to Matt Dinnerman's call on New Year's Eve of Tanya Showers in victory. Tanya Showers getting into the race now. She swings to the outside for the stretch drive, but has seven lengths to gain on Bold Appeal. Can Bold Appeal keep going? She's three on top and getting leg weary now. Two and a half ahead. Tanya Showers is let loose from the far outside and she's coming fast and now Bold Appeal drops anchor and Tanya Showers kicks on. Tanya Showers, Chris Landeros last to first, going away. Tanya Showers, I made no longer. Jeff mentioned a lack of pace in the Mockingbird. Sharp tune out of the two-hole. Probably goes to the front. Uh, Keith Asmussen riding for his dad, Steve. i got to think the instructions in the paddock are pretty clear. Son, you're going to the front, right? I mean, you have to try to take advantage of that. And if you don't, it'll be a long truck ride back home after the race <laughs> when you're riding for your dad and you don't ride to instructions. Let's go to Tampa Bay Downs on Saturday where it's a nice card there. The Pasco Stakes, the feature race on the card for the Tampa Bay Derby hopefuls. But we're going to start things off in race six in our handicapping we're going to look at the wayward last the gasparillo and the pasco stakes those will be races uh six seven and nine on the card so we start in race number six jeff it's the wayward last stakes and again we've got just a field of six in here not strong field sizes in a lot of these stakes races uh on this particular weekend a horse in here i know you like is red hot coming off of three straight victories her name is Laban. Um, she is a filly that originally, a couple of years ago, brought a quarter of a million dollars in a two-year-old sale, which is a lot of money uh, for the pedigree that she had. Um, right. she, she was second sprinting in her debut, which was favorite, so she was always well-regarded. And since then, um, she's reeled off um, three straight wins, uh, a couple last year, and then she uh, came uh, uh, to Aqueduct, won that race, and then most recently in a one-turn mile, uh, she was uh, visually very pleasing in, in mm -hmm. victory, again, with a career top 84 by our number. Pedigree suggests she should be better even going a distance to ground, even though she won a one-turn mile. That's kind of a long sprint. Mm -hmm. This one's a two-turn event um, by uh, Leah Bon out of Amir by Curlin. So and wh where she's drawn and with the tactical speed that she has, she can be fairly close or pretty much wherever she wants to be. Mm -hmm. But again, uh, she's a progressive filly. She's now four. A lightly raced, developing, um, obviously in good hands with Safi Joseph. She looks like uh, a pretty, pretty solid uh, nine to five here for me. Yeah, mile on the 16th race is a golf stream. Short run into the clubhouse turn. They used the 16th pole finish line, so short run in the stretch. Inside speed's awfully effective in these particular spots, and she looks like she has it. There's also speed in Opus 42 down on the rail, but uh, I think Laban, as you mentioned, the one to beat here off this one-turn mile win. Let's go back and take a look. Off the turn and the stretch drive, Laban has the lead. From the inside, Flakes is fighting the good fight, but is back to second. Starship Agenda and riding prettier next. Eighth of a mile to go, Laban almost home. She's got her ears up and she's got plenty out here. The favorites are winner, it's Laban under jockey Edgar Zayas, reporting home three lengths to the good. Here comes her barn buddy, Rosie's Halo, to get second late from Flakes in third. So that race at Tampa Bay Downs, the victory at Gulfstream. We'll see if she transfers her form over to the Gulf Coast. Seventh race Saturday at Tampa Bay Downs is the seven furlong Gasparillo Stakes. This is a Florida Oaks prep, the beginning of that series. Seven furlongs again, the distance. And, you know, this is another race where the field size isn't huge, but we're starting to build up a little bit in field size here. A group of eight gals to go the seven eighths of a mile. Jeff, how do you see it? Well, inside the speed for Mystic Lake and, uh, although she was beaten um, in the Mazarine last time out at Woodbine, that was early November. Mm -hmm. Now she's had a couple of months uh, to uh, maybe uh, gather herself, and she looks like she's enjoying the vac or has enjoyed the vacation. Uh, this is a breeze, a very fast breeze, 46 and 4, uh, doing it without undue pressure, 
This was the fastest of 131 workouts mm. of the day at this distance. And you can see she's not being knocked about at all. I mean, she's she's a nice, good, scopey filly. Uh, she ran on the all-weather at Woodbine, and um, she ran in, in, in legitimate stakes races. Uh, so I, I don't see any reason why she can't de- continue her – development her maturity as at age three uh again inside speed um if she breaks a run in going seven eights i mean she looks like she's quick the turn back and trip doesn't bother me at all um she ran very well at this distance at woodbine in, in the glorious song uh the pace situation doesn't look terribly intense i don't think it's going to be no. blazing at all and if she breaks running i mean i think zayas can probably put him where pretty much put her where uh, he wants to, right? I mean, she's six to five. So again, a short price here for a good filly uh, going for some black type uh, uh, after the van ride. I like Mystic Light, Mystic Lake, I, I, I would say, to get back on the winning track here. Safi Joseph could take the first two of three stakes that we look at here from Tampa on Saturday, according to Jeff's picks. To the Pasco we go. It's race number nine on the card. $125,000 the purse here, seven furlongs. We've seen horses like Musket Man come out of this race in 2009, hit the board in the Kentucky Derby, but this usually around one turn gets more sprinters than we see as Tampa Bay Derby prospects, but you could certainly make the move from this race to the Sam F. Davis next month and into the Tampa Bay Derby in March. That would be the the natural progression if you have a Kentucky Derby type horse. West Saratoga is one you have to think they're not looking at as a sprinter, but more of a hopeful maybe to get down that path. Larry Demerit trains this one. Winner of the Iroquois Stakes, so it's already won in a mile at Churchill Downs. They did go long in the Breeders' Futurity against Locked in some tough company in grade one races at uh, Keeneland. Didn't uh, hold the distance that day. So maybe that horse is one that they're thinking Tampa Bay Derby with, with West Saratoga. The other challenger in this race, book him daniel however it looks more like a sprinter jeff he's pretty brilliant now he's fast i mean on fast on numbers book and dano he's been a mile but again that's november and so now he's had a a couple of months uh, to kind of regather himself he had a a fairly competitive campaign uh, between august and october uh and then uh, ran in november and ran in the national which was a good race he got beat that day but he was more than five clear of everybody else Mm-hmm. Career top number. Again, he's fast on figs, got a blowout of Tampa Bay um, and been training there. So that's good for him. Uh, you mentioned West Saratoga. I think you're right. I think they're probably giving him a little bit of a spin over this track because sometimes mm-hmm. horses excel at Tampa Bay and sometimes they just don't fire at all. And it's good mm-hmm. to find out right off the bat whether your horse is going to handle the track. Um, uh, and he's nine to five. It looks to me like it's pr- probably a two horse race, but right. on fewer figures, uh, Book him Dano is simply faster. And he's uh, maybe more of a sprinter. And I think seven eights will be perfect for him. Looks to me like Bookham Dano uh, probably should get back on the uh, on the winning track here. And his Nashville race was very good as well. Yeah, he's not afraid of a fight, as you'll see here. They approach a quarter mile left to go. Bookham Dano is trying to put away a stubborn Where's Chris to the outside. It's Bookham Dano at the wear- rail. Where's Chris, though, with every shot to gun Bookham Dano down. It's Bookham Dano to the inside. He's very game and gutting it out for a final furlong. Bookham Dano, Where's Chris, will not go away. They're shoulder to shoulder, nose and nose down to the line. Where's Chris has put a neck in front. Where's Chris has got the lead. Where's Chris? He wins the Nashua. Where's Chris wins it over Book him, Dano, then Bilal. Of course, our Hawaii Five O fans will be all over Book him, Dano, and that when we talked about that when the horse ran uh, on our yeah. uh, its official podcast uh, mm-hmm. back uh, and, a couple and, months. And ago. by the way, I, I think I mentioned this before, but um, I once had a horse um, by I bred the horse. He was by the Irish Lord mm-hmm. out of a mare by Hawaii, so I named him Jack Lord. So there you and, go, Jack Lord, the actor who uh, the actor who played right, uh, and and uh, he was actually a pretty good horse. So. Uh, so I'm uh, I'm a little bit partial to Bookham Dano anyway, uh, but I think on pure form he does deserve top billing here. Yeah, those two it looks like a two horse race in there. We'll see how it shakes out for the Pasco Stakes and who may move on towards the Tampa Bay Derby Series to Turfway Park. We go next on Saturday night. It's the Likely Exchange Stakes, one hundred twenty five thousand dollars the purse here, and it's Turfway. So we're not talking about shorter fields at Turfway Park, no siree. 11 of them in here. So this will be one of the best betting races of the stakes races we look at all weekend. Competitive group at Turfway, as we're apt to see. Silver ticket down on the inside. A very interesting entry coming off back-to-back wins for Todd Pletcher on the synthetic at uh, Gulfstream. Now going to make the move north to Turfway in stakes company. So this is a good spot, I think, for silver ticket. 
Yeah, it is. Um, she's moving through the uh, maiden and allowance ranks, and you don't necessarily think of Curlin uh, as an all-weather type of stallion. Right. Uh, but, and I'm not sure Curlin really liked it that much either. Uh, I think he ran in the Breeders' Cup Classic out here. When well, I know his owner did, and I, I know, I know his owner sure. hated it. <laughs> all the plastic, right? Yeah. Um, but for some reason, Silver Ticket, uh, who ran in the dirt at, at Monmouth as a two-year-old, as a uh, three-year-old rather, in a debut, got beat a mile. But then went to Gulfstream Park on the all-weather, and maybe it was the competition, or maybe mm -hmm. it was the service. But she reeled off two very impressive wins, and both were highly rated. So I think Todd Pletcher is saying, you know, I'm not going to mess up a good thing. I mean, there's a stake there, uh, mm -hmm. beautifully bred filly. I think we'll send her to Turfway and see if we can. Uh, keep her on the on the synthetic, and she's got an inside draw. Armia going up the rider, so that's good. Uh, and she's got enough tactical speed to uh, use the rail to good advantage. But this is a good race. I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean that's it, it's it, it. I mean, Katish is solid, coming off a nice uh, stakes win numbers wise. She's every bit mm -hmm. as fast as Silver Ticket. Flashy Jim is a uh, uh, well, obviously an all weather uh, specialist uh, at Turfway. She's right. two wins and three starts with a second, coming off a seven length romp and a Good allowance race. Again, numbers are putting her right there. So mm -hmm. tough, tough race. And again, with three-year-old, uh, older mares, I should say, but lightly raised mares, they advance. Maybe sometimes they step forward quickly. And right. I think I'm seeing that with Silver Ticket. Beautifully bred filly, and she's getting faster and by the race. And I think she's got a chance to be pretty decent. And if she's just an all-weather filly, they'll, eventually they'll find out if she can run in the dirt. But right now, this mm -hmm. is her element. Inside draw, ground-saving trip. Numbers are fitting, lightly raced and improving. Let's take a look at her last victory on the synthetic at Gulfstream Park. Here is a silver ticket for Todd Fletcher. Three quarters, 111 and two. Queen Mach is still there. The favorite silver ticket is ridden out here, turning for home, but it's silver ticket who will move through there in between horses with a short lead. Queen Macha rolling up at the outside in between horses. Way out wide, that's Tamarindo, but it's silver ticket. Silver ticket kicked into another gear. Silver ticket going to make it two in a row. She will romp home late. Silver ticket running up the score. That's the way you like to see it on synthetic, Jeff. That really long stride there and accelerating at the end uh, through the stretch. The final 16th of a mile is everything in the synthetic races uh, most often. Uh, and she looked good there. This is not your father's Turfway Park or not even your younger brother's Turfway Park from like 2018. You know, I mean, this is a, a different kind of meet that they're having. And last year, really, the momentum is big. You talked about the pedigrees. You know, you've got a curling picked on top. There's an arrogate in this race, a gun runner, frosted, quality road. You know, this is a bunch of like synthetic type sires, ghost zapper. These are the tops of the tops. You got Brad Cox, you got Todd Pletcher, you got Mike Stidham. You've got a good group of trainers in here, Dale Romans. This is a good group. This is not the winner of 2008 at Turfway Park. I mean, they I are, what, the they're running some good races. Purses are good. And if you've got an all weather specialist, this is where you should be. Because yeah. the money is really strong, and the competition, this race is tough. But the mm -hmm. overnight races, they're not; they haven't quite caught up with the money yet. It'll right. happen pretty soon. If you if you want a winner, and you don't think maybe Gulfstream's for you, this is the place to go, as far as I'm concerned. Let's take a look at our next race on our handicapping docket. It is the Sunshine Millions Philly Mare Turf at Santa Anita. It goes as race number seven on the card Saturday at the Great Race Place. It's also going to anchor that pick five. The Coast to Coast pick five will end in this race, the Sunshine Millions Philly Mare Turf. So, again, take a look, uh, turf sprint here. Uh, look at the fields that you've got, the races, the post times for the Coast to Coast pick five. Races 10 and 11 at Gulfstream, and then races five, six, and seven. Again, the seventh is the Sunshine uh, millions Philly and Mare turf sprint. So Jeff Siegel, let's get handicapping here in the seventh at Santa Anita down the hill, six and a half furlongs. Are we going to, are we going to keep on the turf this weekend? We got rain your way. What are we looking at? I'm looking outside. I don't see any, so <laughs> I think we'll be okay, but I honestly haven't checked the weather report lately. Um, I, I think we'll be okay. Um, this race, when you have a six and a half furlong down the hill race and it's for cowbreds, the two things that I look at are, Number one, have you been over the hillside course and if you've done well on it? And number two, is it's a cabaret race. Have you done well in open company? Uh, mm -hmm. Are you stepping back? And Rose Maddox actually fits the bill. She's won um, listed stakes in open company, but mm -hmm. she really does like this hillside course. Uh, first or second, five out of eight starts. First or uh, down the hill. 
uh, or on the grass, I should say, first or second, 14 out of 19 times. Yeah. Five-year-old mare, uh, a mid-pace stalking type of style, and then she can really kick it home. She won a similar race back in October against Calbreds, earned an 88 buyer number, uh, which is a career top for her. So um, after b- being freshened since early November, uh, training steadily for Steve Maiotti and picking up Lavi and Pratt, um, there's no reason to believe Rose Maddox won't run mm-hmm. as well as she's capable. And if she does that, she has the edge in this race. She'll want a little pace in front of her, as you're going to see in her win two starts back in the Cal Distaff. There was plenty of speed in that one. This race has unwritten code and chancery way to set the table, so there's plenty of pace up front again. Let's go back to Rose Maddox running down a runaway leader. It's organic with the pedal to the metal has opened up about eight lengths. Rose Dawson in second, Ultimate High and Rose Maddox are right together. And they're followed by Madiha fifth, a dozen lengths off the lead and moving up four wide. The two trailers, Chismosa and Clean Karma. They have a quarter of a mile to go. And it's organic, clear by four. On the outside, Rose Maddox, Ultimate High, center of the course. Madiha running a good race. They're in the final furlong. Madiha is coming after Rose Maddox, who's the new leader. Rose Maddox opens up two. Madiha second, Rose Dawson in third. It's Rose Maddox. Rose Maddox strong to the wire. And Rose Maddox has won the California Distaff decisively over Madiha. Photo for third and oncoming Chismosa in front of Rose Dawson and Ultimate High. A couple points about that. You don't see many turf sprints one geared down. You don't see many of them one spread out like that. You know, the gap to second, the gap to third. Uh, those races are usually chaos to the wire. So very impressive race there uh, from Rose Maddox. Let's go to the Unusual Heat Turf Classic. It is the feature race on Saturday at Santa Anita. It's also our express bet race of the week. I've got my analysis that you can get in the email newsletter each week with First Bet and Express Bet. Be sure to sign up for that. $200,000 the purse here. The Unusual Heat Turf Classic named after the legendary sire of sires amongst the California breads. Unusual Heats. The, they could all run long and they could all run on the turf, it seemed like. So a mile and an eighth on the grass for the unusual heat makes plenty of sense in this case. It does, and this is a, a good race. And again, I'm going to use a similar type of logic here with, in a, when you handicap races that are restricted to cowbird races. Again, the, the two things that I look for is, okay, form on the course at the distance mm-hmm. and form against open company. Now right. you're back with cowbirds. And in this race, there... I, I'm going to ask you for your opinion because I know you've written it up and I, I don't I haven't seen it yet. So we might be on an entirely different page here as far as mm-hmm. I'm as far as an, analyzing this race. But in looking at this race, Bally's Charm, number three, he's four to one. And then you have Kings River Knight, who is the six to five morning light favorite. Now, Kings River Knight is very fast on figures. And you talk about genuine and consistent. He's been first or second, 12 out of 13 career starts. Right. Uh, and he's got a two two wins over at Santa Anita on the course. So you can't get more dependable uh, and, mm-hmm. and more solid than Kings River Knight. The only issue with him is I, I'm just not sure if a mile and an eighth is his best. Right. Um, he, he, he's, he's got a great style where he can mm-hmm. go to the front if you give him to him. He's happy to sit second or third. He can sprint. He can middle distance, mile, mile, 16th. Mm-hmm. But in this race, I just don't know. I, I tried him once. Um, um, in the uh, uh, a race at Del Mar, in which he 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 hit the front and kind of hit a wall and got mm-hmm. two. I was thinking, you know, I don't think he really wants to run this for, but he does because he's good. Then you have Bally's Charm. Now Bally's Charm has won in a mile and eight, mm-hmm. uh, like twice. So I know he can get it, and he's probably more committed to the lead than Kings River Knight. Now, if, if Juan Hernandez and Kings River Knight wants to get Bally's Charm beat, he'll gut him off his feet and get mm-hmm. the lead lead because Bally's Charm is not going to be sitting second. On the right. other hand, if you do that, you might be co- committing suicide yourself. Yeah. So I'm projecting this race to be Bally's Charm making the running and Kings River Knight second. Mm-hmm. Now Bally's Knight, I mean Bally's Charm, if you leave him alone, he's really, really good, which is why I tried him with confidence in his most recent start, even though that was an open race against Lure. Little mm-hmm. did I know that in the same race was a horse that I now believe is the best middle distance grass horse in North America. Yeah. And that is Easter. So Bally's trying got worn down late, but I couldn't have asked for anything more. And he was fast on figs and he's a four time winner at Santa Anita. So in what I think might be a match race, 
I'm going to go with a horse that I think is going to be in front, that's proven at the distance, mm-hmm. and is coming out of probably the better race. Let's take a look at that one. Bally's Charm in the lure stakes against Easter. Trying to angle out, visitant, extreme outside is Cabo Spirit, Easter behind a wall of horses, short man is down at the rail, there's an eighth of a mile to go, and Bally's Charm just keeps on going, there's a lineup behind him, Easter comes out and here he comes, and Easter's going to fly by late, Easter and Frankie DeTore to win the lure with an explosive stretch. If given that kind of race again, there's not a horse like Easter to close, right? And like you mentioned, if he's able to be handed the front and and they try to sit with Kings River Knight, that is a very plausible scenario that we're looking at. I agree with you in Kings River Knight. I don't think he's a mile on eighth horse. He was in this race last year and had four feet in a length, but he had the lead. He had his way, and it wasn't a very fast pace last year. 49 and two, 113 and four. They're not going 113 and four. I mean, the, you know, when you've got a horse like Bally's Charmin, here he's better than that uh in terms of pace so i don't like king's river knight valley's charm is the more likely the front runners to win this race of the two for sure i thought ali gato a horse who's had experience in this race won it two years ago was second in this race last year without much pace help we mentioned that slow 114 you know almost 114 for the six furlongs and ali gato almost got there last year i like that shot with flavian pratt but you're also looking at a horse who you know has lost nine in a row so yeah. it's a horse who Almost gets there often in Alligato. It's got to try to get over the top this time. But if you like consistency, you're talking about it. Kings River Knight, you know, 12 for 13 in the Exacta. Alligato's 14 for 14 in the Superfecta Lifetime. This horse always comes. Always comes. He always it's comes. Just a matter he doesn't always get there. That's the thing. Two Correct. wins That's in 10 question. seconds and thirds. Yeah. But on the other hand, if they come back to him, um, and with Pratt aboard at 6-1, to one, you could do a whole lot worse than gamble on him. Right, and that's kind of where I ended up with it. And so I'm taking my shot there uh, with Alligato. Plenty of respect for Bally Charm, especially coming off that race against Easter. We reviewed that race and, and talked about how good you think Easter is. And uh, what well, I think it was a- since that, too. That, that, yeah. that was the first of his winning streak. And since then, yeah. Easter has just been unbelievably good. So that is a big race for the uh, Turfers, the Unusual Heat Turf Classic, race number nine, on Saturday at Santa Anita. I want to remind you, beat the host competition. will include the first five races at Santa Anita on Saturday and the last five at Gulfstream Park. And it's Millie Ball in the host seat this weekend. So play for $2,000 in cash and prizes for the weekly. Also get yourself in that season standings and the running towards the beat the host championship round. Qualify for that uh, coming up the second week in March. So eight weeks of beat the host. We're into week number two. Take on Millie Ball this week. She will have her picks uh, unveiled as the races go off. So you don't get to see Millie's picks ahead of time. But the one thing we changed up this year to give the players a little more advantage is we've announced the races in advance. It's always going to be the last five at Gulfstream and the first five at Santa Anita. The host doesn't get to pick their races this week. Gives you a little more time as a horse player. You know, the races are drawn on Wednesday for Saturday at Santa Anita and even earlier than that at Gulfstream. So it gives you more chance to handicap and work ahead and know what the races are going to be. But you won't know Millie's picks until the race goes from the starting gate and you can follow that at the Express Bet contest page. So Jeff, a lot of fun action this weekend. Maybe not the greatest stakes weekend that we've ever seen, but good gambling opportunities. And we talked about that unusual heat race, good field of 10 in there, the likely exchange at Turfway with the field of 11. You always have to pick your spots and play your best opinion and play the races that can give you the best chance to win. So the bigger field size is trying to really work on those races, the unusual heat, the likely exchange, handicap those extra because those look to be the races that have the most opportunity, not only in the exotics, but even intra race. You might get an overlay on your win place. Yeah, and um, there are some good races at Santa Anita. I mean, the Chosen Vron is running, but he'll be a very short price, which is why we didn't handicap that race. A few others. Right. Um, we try to look at some of the interesting races and maybe some that offer a little bit more value and a little more opportunities to find something that has, has a price. But uh, again, a good card at Santa Anita tomorrow. Uh, and I think, uh, uh, again, with the Cowbreds there, they're fun to watch because I tell you what, a lot of them last forever, it seems right. like. More, more so than the open horses where they get a little bit more creative and they shift mm-hmm. them around. Cal, the Cowboy program is very good, as is the New yep. York program, the Maryland program, the Florida program. I mean, these state bred races, uh, there's no need to go anywhere. You know, just yep. sit here and take the purses and um, try to extend your horse's career as long as you can. And we've got a lot of old pros running uh, this weekend at Santa Anita. So 
see what happens. It's a, again, fun weekend for sure. And it's a three day weekend out here. So uh, we'll be doing a lot of work. All of the selections that we have will be on the express bet uh, website. Uh, and one other thing that I'm going to be tweeting out tomorrow. So if you're on my Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. a couple of uh, maiden first time starters are running at Gulfstream park mm -hmm. tomorrow. And both of those two horses, um, Pletcher horses were featured in our, uh, uh, eye catching segment. So mm -hmm. and I'm kind of looking forward to it. One's two to one in the morning line. The other one, I think is six or eight to one. So, mm -hmm. um, but I'll tweet that info out tomorrow Great. and remind everybody uh, what it is, or you can look at, go to express bet and look at the list that we have up there as well. Right. The eye catchers blog updated as Jeff gets new horses added to the list, or we update the results of ones that were already on there. Uh, you can catch that. Uh, there was an update posted this morning here on the 12th. So, uh, mm -hmm. Check that out on the eye catchers blog. Uh, turf pick three on Saturday or any day of the meet at uh, Santa Anita. Saturday's turf pick three will include that featured race, the uh, unusual heat turf classic. So check that out because we've got a good promo for you. Bet a hundred dollars on the turf pick three at Santa Anita, get 20 back. So a $20 rebate on your wagers uh, when you bet a hundred dollars on the Keeneland or the I always want to say Keeneland turf pick three, Santa Anita turf pick three. Mm -hmm. Keeneland first turf pick three i do a lot of podcasts for keelan so it just kind of when i think turf pick three the word keelan comes out of my mouth <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta change that habit here we're two weeks into the santa anita meet and i gotta get used to the santa anita turf pick three here uh again with a bet 100 get 20 back promotion with express bet and first bet you'll want to check that out and of course when you play the coast to coast pick five the best place to do it is with first bet and express bet because coast to coast pick five each saturday and sunday has 10 times wager rewards points so you rack those up in your account and you can use those for wagering credits products in the pro shop all those kind of things like that so take advantage of every opportunity you have in promotions and points all those sort of things as a horse player uh it's a tough game but it's a great game and use every piece of information and tool you have at your disposal uh, to make it a better playing experience. Jeff and I are going to be back on Tuesday to review this weekend's races. Our It's Official podcast on Tuesday. I'll recap five hot topics in racing. I'm sure some of it will take place on the track this weekend. So Jeff, have a great weekend. Uh, uh, stay dry out there. We want good turf racing in Southern California. Enjoy those cowbreds. I will. Thank you very much. Good day. Good weekend. Have a happy holiday three day weekend. And uh, we'll talk to you on Tuesday. All right. On behalf of everybody with first technologies and Jeff Siegel, I'm Jeremy Plunk. Have a great holiday weekend. We'll talk to you Tuesday as he